This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. Today's lecture is on motion of a projectile from chapter 12.6 in Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to analyze the free flight motion of a projectile. Activities include applications, the kinematic equation for projectile motion, and we'll do some problem solving. Well, here's the man shooting a basketball is shot at a certain angle, what parameters should the shooter consider in order for the basketball to pass through the basket? Well, we know the ball is shot at a certain angle. I think it'd be nice to know the velocity at which it's shot. And also you need to know, of course, the position of the basket. Remember section 12.2 when we talked about rectilinear motions. Simple projectile motion can be treated as two rectilinear motions. One in the horizontal direction that has zero acceleration and the other in the vertical direction, which experiences the constant acceleration through the gravity of the Earth. So if a projectile is launched, you know, we have the gravity vector pointing down, so that's acceleration in the y direction. Now, if we neglect air resistance, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So that means that the velocity in the x direction is a constant. Okay, let's consider this experiment. So the red ball was dropped with zero velocity, and at the same instant, the yellow ball was dropped, but it had an initial horizontal velocity. Well, these are the time sequence of the drop, and at each elevation, the balls are at the same height. So that means they're both experiencing the same downward acceleration. And note that in the x direction, at every time t for the yellow ball, it's traveled the same amount of distance. So that supports our theory that the velocity in the horizontal direction is constant. So let's review section 12.2, constant acceleration. These are the equations for constant acceleration that came from section 12.2. So we're going to use these equations in both the x direction and the y direction simultaneously to solve this projectile problem. So here is a particle projectile. It is at position x naught, y naught, and it is released with a velocity v naught, and we have the components of the velocity in each direction, and that's just like a force. You just multiply v naught by the cosine of this angle, and you get uh, the x component of the velocity. Uh, acceleration due to gravity is g, and at any time t, the ball is at position x, y, and it has some downward velocity and some horizontal velocity. Okay, since the acceleration in the x direction is zero, the velocity in a horizontal direction is constant. So we can write our equation for x as a function of time. x is the initial position plus the component of the velocity in the x direction times time. Now, the positive y-axis is directed upward, so the acceleration in the y-direction is minus g. So you apply the constant acceleration equations in section 12.2, and you'll get these three equations here. So the y-velocity is the initial y-velocity minus gt. y is a function of time, is the initial position y, plus the initial velocity in the y-direction times time, minus one-half gt squared. And the velocity in the y direction squared is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction squared minus 2g times y minus y naught. So let's do an example. Here this boy is kicking a ball with the velocity of 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. Uh, we want to find out what is the velocity at c and also how far it travels. So we'll apply the kinematic equations. So we know that the velocity in the x direction is 10 times cosine of 30. It's the initial velocity times cosine of 30. And the initial velocity in the y direction is 10 times sine 30. So we can write as a function of time these four equations. So the velocity in the x direction is constant, 10 cosine 30. The velocity in the y direction is 10 sine 30. That's the initial velocity in the y, minus 0.981 times t.
x is a function of time, is the initial velocity in the x direction times time. And remember, there's no acceleration in the x direction. And y as a function of time is the initial velocity in the y direction times time minus one half gt squared. Now we have these equations and we need to solve for something. We need to know something about the problem. What do you know about this problem at the point C? What variable do you know? Well, we know the x velocity is 10 cosine 30. That doesn't help much. We also know that y at the point C is equal to zero. So we can substitute that in this equation here and we can solve for the time it takes to get to C. So y is 0 is equal to 10 sine 30 times t minus 1 half 9.81 t squared. That's this equation right here. Solve for t and we get the time it takes to reach C is a little over one second. So now that we know the time we can substitute that back into here and find x at point C. So it'll be 10 cosine 30 times 1.019. And we can also find the velocity at y by substituting the time in this equation right here. So let's do that. So this, we already know, the velocity in the x direction is constant, 10 cosine 30. And here's the velocity in the y direction at uh, point C. Oh, we're substituting in the time right there. So it's 5 meters per second. It's negative, so it's downward. We're asked for the magnitude of the velocity. So we want to take the square root of some of the squares of the x and y components. And the answer is 10 meters per second. How far did it travel? Well, our equation was x is 10 cosine 30 times t. Substitute t is, is a little over 1 second. And the ball has traveled 8.83 meters. So here's a problem to solve. The skier leaves his ski jump at an angle of theta sub a, and the ski jump is 4 meters above this point, and he's going down a 3 on 4 slope, and he lands 100 meters down the slope. The question is, what is his initial velocity? So the plan is to apply the rectilinear equations of motion to the projectile in the x and y directions. So let's do that. So we have this equation for the position as a function of time. We substitute in our knowns. We know that x at the location b is 4 fifths times 100. The initial x was 0. And the initial velocity we're looking for, multiplied by the cosine of 25, that's the velocity in the x direction, times the time it takes to get from a to b. So we can simplify this equation and come up with the time it takes to go from a to b is this right here. Now let's do the motion in the y direction. Again, we take our constant acceleration equation in the y direction and plug in the known values. So y at b is minus 64. It's equal to the initial y, which is 0, plus the initial velocity in the y direction, which is that, times the time it takes to get from a to b, which we know is this right here. So we just substitute that in. Minus 1 half g times, again, this time right here. We substitute it in. You solve this for the velocity at A, and you get 19.42 meters per second. Here's another problem. There's a golfer. He's on a, looks like a 10 degree slope. He hits the golf ball at an angle of 45 with an initial velocity of 80 feet per second. So we want to find D. Where will the ball land? Again, the same procedure. We're going to establish a coordinate system, x and y, and we're going to apply the equations of motion in the two directions. Okay, first the motion in the x direction. We're using this equation here. So the initial x at location b is equal to d times the cosine of 10. And the initial x at a is 0 plus the initial velocity in the x direction, which is 80 times the cosine of 55. Now you have to add 10 degrees to 45 degrees to get the proper angle there, times the time it takes to get from A to B. And we can rewrite this. The time it takes to get to A to B is this value right here times D. So the motion in the y direction, we're going to use this equation here. 
again, substitute an unknown. So the initial y in, at point b is d sine of 10. It's right here. The initial y value is 0. The initial velocity is 80 times sine of 55 times the time it takes to get from a to b. So we'll substitute that in right there. Minus 1 half g times, again, the time it takes to get to a to b squared. So you can simplify this to this, and the answers are d is equal to 0, which is trivial, or 166 feet. This concludes this tutorial on motion of a projectile. Next up is section 12.7, current and linear motion, normal and tangential components.